So I haven't made sausage on this channel for a long time. And the reason for that is, if I'm really honest, it's because I really don't like making sausage. It's messy, there are so many things to clean, weighing out all the spices, cutting up the meat, working out your fat ratio. So I only really make sausage when I have to. However, when I saw that Chud's Barbecue was selling his own sausage starter mix, basically everything that you need to make a good sausage, I thought I had to get some and I had to try it out. So as I say, one of the annoying things about making sausage is weighing out all your spices and having a good ratio of salt and spices in a sausage can really make or break it. And Brad's been making sausage for a long time, so I trust that his Bix right here is gonna be perfect. So this really is a starter. You could do whatever you want to this. You can add jalapenos, cheese. You can use this on its own, add nothing to it and have a real middle of the road, good sausage. So I've got some brisket trim. I'm in the mood for a good beef sausage. Maybe with a little heat in it, maybe a little cayenne, maybe a Texas hot link style. We're gonna try this mix out, make some sausage. This has the right amount of spices and the right amount of salt for a five pound or 2,268 grams of meat. Just grind up that amount of meat, pork, beef, chicken, any kind of meat you wanna use in your sausage. Add this, case it, cook it, and you're done. So I have five pounds or 2,268 grams of brisket trim, and I'm going for a 30% fat content in this sausage, and that works out to be around 1,588 grams of lean meat and 680 grams of beef fat fat. So this is that hard fat that you get on a brisket, and this is that lean meat. I just separated it, weighed it out, worked out what 30% was, and now I've got my meat trim ready to grind. If you don't want to invest in a grinder, I'll put the link to this one below. You can just go to your butcher and ask them to grind you up a 70-30 lean to fat sausage mix and come home and case it. But I do recommend if you trim a lot of meat, grab yourself a grinder, make burgers, sausage, etc. Gonna grind this up. So we got all our meat ground up, and I should have said that this was in the freezer for about an hour before it went in, so it ground up nice. You don't want to be grinding up fat that's too warm. So before I get this mixed up, I'm going to transfer it into a higher sided pan so I can get a really good mix on without this ending up all over the floor. And we're going to go in with our starter mix. And you don't even need to add milk powder. There's already milk powder in it, and that's going to help bind the sausage, make it nice and plump, obviously. So as I say, I'm in the mood for a hot link, so I'm going to add to this batch six grams of cayenne pepper and four grams of hot hot chili powder. So I just eyeballed the volume when I weighed it out and it came to six grams. I'll let you know if I think it needed more. And because I like extra black pepper in my sausage, going in with seven grams of black pepper. And then the only other thing that I'm gonna add is pink curing salt. If you've watched Chud's barbecue videos before or you've seen my sausage video, you'll know that pink curing salt is really important if you plan on cold smoking your sausage. And by cold smoking, I mean anything that's gonna put your sausage in the danger zone for an extended amount of time. And that's exactly what we're gonna do do. There isn't any pink salt in the sausage starter, so you have to add it yourself if you're gonna do that. You could just grill them off straight away, but for me, I'm gonna cold smoke them, so about five and a half grams of pink salt going in. I'm also gonna add a splash of ice cold water, just enough to help the texture, and then I'm just gonna make sure that I get a real good mix on this. Make sure that the spices and the pink salt is reasonably dispersed before I really start to try and bind this together. And once I've done that, and I think it's evenly mixed up, I'm gonna go in with my actual bind. I'm gonna get this nice and mixed up. This is going to help to make sure that you get a nice dispersion on all those spices. It's also going to make sure that when you case the sausage, you end up with a nice plump sausage rather than one that crumbles when you slice into it. Oh my god, that's freezing. So about five minutes of mixing, it's come to a nice tacky consistency. You can see that it doesn't fall off my hand when I turn it upside down. Good colour, it smells really good. We'll set this to the side and get ready to case. So from here, we're going to take our sausage mix and drop it into the hopper. I'll put a link below where you can buy Buy this sausage stuffer. I'm really going to try and pack it in. So really packing it down, getting rid of all that excess air. I'll just slowly turn it until it comes to the end of this tube. And then I like to use this Franklin Cambro tray just because it hasn't got a texture to it. It's nice and smooth so the sausages can slide around a little bit. And then we need something to case the sausages into. I like to use the 32, 34 millimeter natural hog casings from Butcher's Sundries. I've used a ton of different hog casings available to us in the UK and the ones from Butcher's Sundries are by far the best that I've used. They're a lot stronger and they tend to pop less and they're about as consistent in terms of diameter as I've been able to find. So, so I rinsed these off and they've just been hydrating in some fresh water for about two hours. Tie that end up. 
And from here, I'm just using my left hand to create some tension on that casing, making sure there are no air pockets, making sure it is well compact in there. And you can do these link by link like I'm gonna do, or you could do a one big rope, twist them at the end. I like this way because you can kind of guarantee each link is nice and firm. There's one, just twisted it, go again. And on that last link, I span the sausage forward. So on this link, I'm gonna go backwards. And that's gonna make sure that we don't unlink the previous one. And I like to take them just to the point where I think that maybe another two turns might pop them. And that's it, all the sausage cased up, need to get them onto a wire rack. But before that, we need to separate them. And when I'm putting these on, I'm making sure that as few of these are touching as possible to make sure that there's some nice circulation around every single one of them. And specifically these little ends, these little twists are gonna dry out overnight. It's what's gonna keep the sausage sealed and make sure nothing leaks out. One thing that I have seen Brad and others do is to put a fan on these and that air moving over the top is gonna to really help to dry out the casings, form that pellicle, and that's really gonna to help to build up good color. So because these are going into the fridge overnight and I don't have a big outdoor fan, I have another idea. Obviously, I didn't have a fan in my fridge, so I bought this little desk fan that is clippable. It's a rechargeable battery, it moves. So what I'm gonna do is clip this to the shelf above, face it down towards the sausage, and there we go. I don't care if that's ridiculous or not. I think it probably is. And definitely overkill, but I thought it was a good idea. And I'm interested to see whether it has a real big impact or not on the texture of these skins in the morning. So these sausages are out of the fridge. They've been in overnight with that fan on. The skins have dried out nicely. They've got a good color to them. They've firmed up a good amount. The ends have dried out. So we're gonna take these outside and cold smoke them for a couple of hours. Typically, I would cold smoke either on the offset or on my Masterbuilt Gravity Series. But I really wanna give the pellet cooker a go. We're gonna cook it at 165 Fahrenheit, maybe four to five hours. We'll use the super smoke function to make sure that we get plenty of smoke. I'm using lumberjack pecan pellets. And because we're gonna cold smoke, these sausages are gonna be in the danger zone for a good few hours. So that's why we added the pink salt, very important. If you're gonna do this and you're using the chud premix and you're gonna be smoking at a low temperature to build that color and flavor, you need to use the pink salt to make sure you're fighting off any harmful bacteria that might occur whilst you're cold smoking. It's looking like a good sausage. We're gonna be setting this to 165 Fahrenheit using the super smoke function and we'll come back in a couple of hours. So these sausages have been cold smoking for about three hours and you can see that they got a nice red color to them. I need to temp check these to make sure that they're actually cooked. We're looking for a temperature of about 150, 155. All I'm gonna do is just give them a quick flip and this little stubby one I'm gonna use to temperature check. So we're reading about 144. So still got a little way to go, which isn't a bad thing because these could get a little bit more color. So I'll let these go for a little while longer. When they get up to a safe temp, stick them in an ice bath to cool them down. Right, so these have been on for about five and a half hours. They're reading about 150, looking good. These are coming off now and these are gonna go into an ice bath. This is just a pan with some cold water and a huge amount of ice. What this is gonna do is gonna cool the sausages down rapidly so they will get to a safe temperature and they can go into the fridge. It's also gonna help to tighten up those casings and help with the snappy skin that we're after. So once these have cooled down, it'll be a good time to vacuum seal them. That's what I like to do. You can put them in the fridge or in the freezer and whenever you're ready to eat them, just warm them up exactly like we're gonna do. So these sausages have been ice bathed, they've been chilled down and you can see that all the fat is still nice and studded throughout. So none of that fat has rendered. So what we're gonna do now is put a couple of these on, bring them up to a safe temperature, render some of those fats. So we're gonna cook these at about 250 Fahrenheit and and probably gonna take about half an hour, maybe. And although these were safe when I took them off, they're safe to eat technically, none of that fat's rendered. So that's what we're gonna do now. So it's been about 45 minutes and these are temping at about 155 Fahrenheit. And as you can see, they are still nice and plump. They haven't popped, they haven't burst, they're not shriveled, they're looking good. So we'll take these inside, let these cool down a little bit and we'll slice into them. So these sausages have cooled down a little bit. What's funny is that these are genuinely some of the plumpest sausages I've ever made. They are firm. Good smoky smell on them. Not crazy amounts, but a nice amount. We'll slice it. Oh. It smells insane. Let's give it a try. Hmm. That 
is honestly perfectly seasoned. Perfectly balanced flavor, not too hot. I definitely would have enjoyed a little more heat and I don't know exactly how much heat is in the sausage starter mix to begin with. I can't imagine too much. So that cayenne is coming through, but a little bit more next time, maybe double. And honestly, that was the easiest sausage to make. I really enjoyed the fact that I didn't have to weigh up all the spices, just a little bit of pink salt in there, a couple of additional spices. But honestly, I think if you just took away that cayenne, it's still a really good sausage. It is perfectly seasoned. That 30% fat, always good. Honestly, this tastes borderline commercial in terms of how spot on the salt is, the seasonings are, the bind, and in terms of the pellet grill smoke flavor, it's not as smoky as it would be on an offset, obviously, or even on my master build, but it definitely does the job. For convenience, you definitely can't beat using the tray for smoking sausage. I can't stop eating. Uh, so you can pick this sausage starter up from the Chad's Barbecue shop online. And if you're in the UK, this will be available from Pro Smoke Barbecue very shortly. So go pick some up, make a batch of sausage, put your own flair on it. Even if you're a well-experienced sausage maker or just starting out, I think this is perfect.